Sakina, we excited ourselves to literally coming to you from a construction site. There's engineers and students around us, PhD students from the University of Johannesburg, and there's um, a really innovative partnership between the Department of Science and Innovation and the University of Johannesburg just in efforts to try and improve the delivery of housing in South Africa. And of course, uh, just try to uh, go along with the rest of the world as uh, they try to create innovations. You can see the printer in the background. Uh, this massive contraption is a three-dimensional printer uh, in the construction industry and it's uh, 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 said that it will impact the industry in a very meaningful way and we'll be speaking to different uh, stakeholders in this project as we go along uh, but for now we are joined by uh, from the Department of Science and Innovation Dr. Mboneni Mwope thank you so much for joining us and we're also joined uh, here by uh, uh, Professor Jeffrey Mahachi from the University of Johannesburg and perhaps we'll start with you uh, Dr. Mwope just how groundbreaking is this and how, why did the department get involved in this project? Yeah, we got involved in this department because one of the things we're trying to do is to look at how science and technology can actually help us modernize various aspects of our uh, economic sectors. And the construction industry is one of those areas where you're beginning to see that there's not a, a whole lot of new young people coming on board and especially now with people getting more educated, technology is beginning to run all aspects of the economy. And that's why we have started this project so that we can look at what kind of technologies can be brought into the construction sector to really revolutionize it. Yeah. In a country such as South Africa, where there's huge disparities, economic and social, uh, social uh, economic uh, disparities, what is the importance of modernization and how do you ensure that it's inclusive? So modernization is really about um, making sure that we are, as we talk always about fourth industrial revolution, we are seeing that there is so much around matters of safety, for example, how can technology bring that on board? Issues of climate change and environmental friendliness, so the technology gives that to us. But one big thing, of course, is it, now we're talking, starting to see a lot of our young people getting educated. And we are of the view that the jobs of the future are not going to be the kind of jobs that we currently have. So science and technology is about looking far ahead than we currently are uh, yeah. you know, in terms of where we are. So that's why we're saying if we bring these technologies, we can also begin to see the excitement about young people in these sectors so that we don't see sectors that are deserted while they are needed. We still need to build houses, but we also need to have our young people uh, involved as well. So this is talking about young people professor mahachi let's bring you in here we see all the uh, phd and honor students that are involved in this project uh, how, what is the project all about how did you get the department of science and innovation uh, to come along on this one thank you uh, the university of johannesburg we are on the cutting edge of promoting the fourth industrial excuse me, fourth industrial revolution. Right? So one of the projects that we embarked on in partnership with the Department of Science and Innovation is the construction 3D printing. We believe that this technology is going to revolutionize the way in which we deliver houses. We are looking at speed of construction, quality and cost. But in order for us to be able to do so, we want to engage our youngsters to start introducing new ways in which we can actually promote innovation in the built environment. So we've got a couple of students who are actually working uh, uh, on 3D printing and these students range from the master students, the doctoral students and in total we've got more than 50 students who are actually working uh, on this construction 3D printing. You're in a division within the UJ called SMAC, Sustainable Materials and Construction Technologies and I know our viewers want to know more about the printer and we'll be talking about it and its capabilities and its features features as we continue with uh, this broadcast but for now let's just talk about that sustainability factor and I'm going to ask our cameraman Tamba to just uh, move to this side to this three contraptions we'll start with uh, the uh, aluminium one just in terms of how you test the sustainability of the product that this printer prints okay when you talk about sustainability First of all, we must make sure then that the house is fit for purpose 
And when looking at fit for, for purpose, we are looking at issues around structural strength and stability. We must make sure that this house, under heavy winds, storms, etc., is not going to fall down. We are also looking at fire, <clears throat> right? In the Let's speak to the contraption. On the contraption. So, so let's start with this, with this, with what is what is available here. This is a water, a, a, a rain testing equipment. So, what what we have in here is that, in the event that there is a, 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 a rain, right, we simulate the rain and then we measure the extent in which the rain actually penetrates into the house. So, this is one of the equipments that we have here. And uh, over that side there, when you look at that one, that is a soft body impact test. Right? A soft body impact test is also an impact test that in the event that you have got a body which is actually impacting on the, on the building, it's not going to break down that building. Right? And uh, uh, just behind there, we also have what you call then the hard body impact test. All right, we can't see that yeah, one, but you sure. can speak to it. But also a hard body impact test is, is such that if there's a heavy big stone is thrown onto the, onto the wall, it is not also going to break down the, yeah. the building. So in this, essentially, we've got about seven tests that we conduct. Right? As I mentioned, there's a fire test. One of those walls that you, you see behind us there, we are going to put it in a fire, in the fire lab. Right? So we then test it and make sure then that that, that wall is not going to disintegrate within 30 minutes. Right? So that people are able to evacuate the house in the event that there is fire. So there's fire test, then structural test, there's rainwater penetration, then there's durability aspects, and then there's uh, thermal and energy performance. We'll talk a, a little bit more about energy and thermal performance test uh, when we demonstrate the house later on during the day. Let's bring back in Dr. Ambonene Mope, just in terms of what you hope to achieve with this project, <coughs> and how do you deal with those overlaps with uh, the Department of Human Settlements? So we are already partnering with the Department of Human Settlements and uh, both at national and at provincial level. Provincial level, uh, uh, KwaZulu-Natal is involved and uh, the um, uh, province of Gauteng is also interested as well. And, and we, so, so that's really where those overlaps come in. But what is also important is we're trying to also ensure that government's capability in terms of responding even when there are emergencies. So for example, if you've got a fire or you've got flooding, and you need to move people to a temporary housing or permanent housing, but that can be constructed very quickly. So, I mean, you can go uh, within a matter of eight hours, you've got a fully printed house. So that's really, you're not going to have to say people wait uh, for months while we still figure out how we can actually construct the houses. So this is really one of the advantages we are saying. We're using science, technology and innovation to build a capable state. If you can speak about constructing a house in about eight hours, that's a massive impact on the construction industry. How are we bringing that space along? So part of what we are doing here, this is a science and technology program, but we're looking at the social aspect as well. So we're looking at impact on employment. We're looking at the impact, uh, and we also meant, uh, spoke about the environment already. And the issue that uh, we, we, we're considering is how do we make sure that while we bring technology on board, like we're doing in other sectors, that we do what we call the just transition. So we already begin to think about how do we look at, and, and the critical thing about fire, for example, is how do we ready the country for the jobs of the future? Because we are beginning to see the jobs of the olden days, whether it is in mining, we've seen it in the uh, telephone sector, they have disappeared. And so we need to then make sure that we are ready for the jobs of the future, which is why you're seeing a lot of young people around here that we're also sponsoring to study and be ready for this new set. Professor Mahashi, uh, acad the academic space is a perfect place uh, to prepare uh, people for the jobs of the future. How are students at the University of Johannesburg uh, being incorporated into this project? Right. Uh, the first thing is that uh, we do have students who are studying their honours and students who are doing their post uh, masters and doctoral students. So what we do is then that we identify our students who are still in their honors, we groom them and, and introduce some of these uh, fourth industrial revolution type of technologies so that they are prepared to do to uh, work um, in different aspects of research that are, in, are related to innovation and construction. When are we gonna get to a place where we originate the projects 
and they are proudly South African project 100%. Oh, this is the beginning of, 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 uh, of South African projects. If you can actually see most of the work that we are doing here, uh, one, we are actually looking at localization of materials. Right? So the materials that is going to be used for 3D printing will be developed in South Africa and used for construction in South Africa. So the students that are actually working on this, they are working on a variety of, of, of materials from your geopolymers to uh, indigenous uh, 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 materials, all of them which are local for South Africans. So our starting point is we need to be able to utilize local students, we need to be able to utilize local materials right, and enhance uh, 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 the, the future through the, the students. If you, if you can see one of the things that happens on a construction site today, construction sites are, are associated by being dangerous, dirty, uh, and disgusting <laughs> is all those things that are actually happening on a construction site yeah. but if you look uh, and disorganized uh, but if you look at a typical construction site it will be like what you are seeing today here right where youngsters are able to actually implement and are proud to go to be on site if you see the youngsters that are going to be printing here today they do not have any exposure to the built environment at all they've never been on a construction site mm -hmm. but what did they build this house. So you don't need now a purely qualified bricklayer right, to be able to do so. But somebody straight from the university or college can immediately build a house. For Which you. for me is also problematic for inclusivity, but that's a conversation sure, sure. for another day. But Dr. Mopa, from a developmental point of view and from a skills development uh, point of view, Aren't you concerned as a department that we are not originating these uh, such massive projects? It's got the capability to really impact the South African economy. So, so what, we, what we do is that there are things that will originate here. There are things that we will take from abroad and actually, as the prof is saying, begin to localize. And, and that's really what we call reverse engineering. And one aspect of what he's saying is that as we look at how this printer works, you begin to utilize your own material. The, the, the next thing is basically how do we begin to locally manufacture 3D printers ourselves. We have done this with other projects, for example, around additive manufacturing, which is part of what we're doing here, where you start off with a product that is from abroad and then you work on your own. And now we have got programs where uh, we are producing some of these things locally. So that's basically how we're going to start it. And from the skill side, that's why every single project that we support as a department of science and innovation you are going to see students because we are building skills that's really our most critical part we can't do any project without training young students whether they are from universities uh, universities of technologies or tibet colleges that's really the primary thing and one of the things around localization is because these products cannot be the same all over our products are very interesting. You walk into this house, I came here on Monday, which was at the heart of the heat wave. You walk inside there, it's a completely different environment, it's cool. Okay. And that's really one thing around material that we're looking at. All right, let's just, uh, Professor Mahashi, end off with you. And let's just remind our viewers, because we can speak about uh, the policy and the legislative side, but let's speak about the content of today, the sprinter behind us. Let's just remind our viewers about uh, the importance of this three-dimensional contraption, that's big contraption behind us, and how it hopes to revolutionize the delivery of housing in South Africa. This is the printer of the future. This is the, con this is the construction of the future. We are looking at a product that is going to be able to deliver a house in a short space of time. We talked about eight hours being able to deliver a house like that in eight hours. I'm talking about the top structure, not necessarily including the foundation. We are talking about a, a product that is going to, uh, to deliver houses uh, at a cost-effective price. Right? So cost-effectiveness is going to be another thing third thing is going to be quality so we are looking at a good quality look at the number of houses that we are seeing being delivered using the brick and mortar etc some of them substandard products but we are revolutionizing and saying that this machine here 
is going to provide you with high quality products. And I can imagine the viewer at home is frustrated because we're not uh, demonstrating the process to you and we will do in uh, later crossings. But you have the printer uh, here on this side and the product, uh, the uh, built up house uh, by uh, th through 3D printing. And as we go through these broadcasts, we'll explain the process to our viewers.